not a goal assist. <laughs> exactly. You can't claim that as a goal assist. Everyone. Just tell every, people what we're watching. No, I will not. We, I will Luke then. We're watching the 1988 <laughs> prelim final, Melbourne against uh, Carlton at Waverley. Yeah, I didn't even know it was on to you. I said to that. Gary, did you play that day? Play? <laughs> and then he just reeled off his stats and he said, Look, watch this, Wisp. 14 goal assists in this game. At half time, up to half time. Where is he? Where is he? I just handballed that out. You've run sausage ragged. Yeah, well, sausage's got his tongue hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his hand in the air, telling the walls he'd get me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a physical clash, too. Oh, this there's, is, th- there's Shawnee White. This is a very oh, vicious bang. game, Tim. This oh, is, bang, the, kicking. The 88 prelim was a very vicious game of footy. I tell you what, you're allowed to get away with a lot more oh, than you what you ain't. can today. This is the head on quarter. contact, too, before Blake had his head over the ball. Jamie Dersman gets king hit in a minute. King hit from behind, in behind the play. No no report. I tell you what you were good at, and no. I've only been watching this for a couple of minutes, and they're only highlights. You were good at ducking out the back and finding <laughs> some space. <laughs> <laughs> That's because sausage couldn't keep up. Um, we're here for the Kogan Money Credit Cards, pack full of value in Melbourne mm. Airport Parking. Now offering value terminal and premium parking. Mm. Righto. Mm. We have been um, privy to nine games of footy, the practice matches over the weekend, So and all other sport. The cricket yep. um, finished up well, before we've been on there. Um, oh, another one. Won. Another one. Have they uh, shifted <laughs> someone else onto you? Oh, that's a Is tight, that roost playing on you now? Tight angle. It, yeah, sauce has gone off you. Yeah. No, no problem there. Um, <laughs> righto, enough of that. So we thought we'd go through these statements and say, yeah, you know, which one's overstated, yeah. which one's because everyone wants. As we said, you got to yeah. get your voice heard. So let's run through, and you can join us one three hundred seven three six seven three six. You can make a statement from the weekend, and the Wisp and I, with the benefit of hindsight and sitting back and listening to everyone mm. over the last couple of days, we can say, no, nah, overstated or understated. And we haven't seen. Every practice game. I haven't seen every practice game. I've seen bits and pieces of games here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Um, will LC Green get a mention at some stage, will he or not? Who? Lean, clean, Tom Green. That's mine. You, you can't pick that's that. Mine. That's mine. That's mine. He will get a, a mention. Right. Whoever goes with it first claims it. Here's one. Okay. Let's start with the big one. Yeah. The biggest one. This is the the big biggest, one. biggest talking point during the offseason was how a Melbourne – going to combine Gorn and Grundy in yep. the ruck. Yep. Okay? Yep. Now, on what we've seen so far, which is a very, very small sample size, yep. that's the best production I've seen from Grundy since Neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's right at home there at Melbourne at the moment with Maxie Gorn. How many goals they kicked between him at the weekend? Was it six? Five, I think. I think it might have been six. Well, okay. I heard we'll... Jared yesterday say it was five. Okay. Well, I heard someone else say it was six. I don't know. Let's say five and a half. No, no, no. Okay, we'll cut right down the middle. There's nothing in what we've seen so far mm-hmm. to suggest that this isn't anything other than a recruiting touch of genius. I'm hoping, like I'm hoping that that's the case. I'm barracking for it, but it's overstated. Like they're, 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 they're sixty goal. People, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna Who, no, but has anyone said they're going to combine for 60? Oh, yeah. All sorts of things have been said over the weekend. But I think... That's I, a stretch on hey, 60. jury out still. Mm. Like we we just got to wait to see whether these two can work. Hoping like hell it will. Um, biggest headache, I think Nicky Dell said this is going to be the biggest headache for opposition clubs in the competition. Mm. Overstated. Just just overstated. For my, that, that's for mine. That's the way I read it. You're trying to play it down though because it's uh, it's Melbourne. Well, I knew you'd say that, but no, it's not. I'm just. I thinking, think you are trying. I think to play it's it down. gone a bit hard early. Yeah. Have uh, have they exposed themselves in any way the tactic about how they're going to combine the two um, too much or I wouldn't, look? I wouldn't everyone sees it anyway, and you got to boot it. Yeah. They're no, getting behind the you know, Max would get behind the footy a little bit. I think there's an opportunity to try all sorts of things. Um, I, I know I wasn't at the game. I was watching on telly whether Max. Mm. Assume the centre half back role at stages, which allowed um, you know Petty or someone Stephen May or someone else to go and run forward. Anyway, I think it's a great start, but I think it's a bit overstated to say it's going to be the biggest headache in footy. They've jumped out of the blocks, Melbourne. The two games I've watched them play, mm-hmm. they've been in sparkling, sparkling, sparkling form. Now, if that was another team that say finished outside the eight last year, you might be thinking, oh, okay, they're gone too early. You know, they're up and about. They've done a hard, hard preseason. Are they going to be able to last the year? But you look at the profile of the Melbourne team, you think it's all there. Like, for mo- even, I think their first, well, their first 12 rounds last year, 
I think they were, were they undefeated? Well, undefeated. Well, 11 and 1 or something. Yeah, like, yeah, something like that. So they started well last year, but they weren't able to maintain that right to the end. But uh, and what we've seen so far, Buck said this yesterday, that they are the team to beat this season. Melbourne. Overstated. Okay. On the back of a practice I'll go through, I'll, I'll go through some of these, okay? Well, and we then, do, we, we, I'm throwing them at you as well. No, Darcy Fogarty. Uh, yeah. Fogarty. Um, can he win the Coleman? Because Over, overstated. I think Corn is a big, big fan. Yeah. Overstated only because I don't think the Crows are going to be uh, in the eight, and I doubt very much whether you can win a Coleman from outside. Perhaps it's been done before, but that's not to take anything away from him. He's turned his career around in the back half of last year mm. and looks like he's set and ready to go again. We want to poke holes in anyone that does a list, okay? That's what we do. Everybody, you know, somebody does a list and somebody says, all, no, no, they shouldn't be in that order, whatever. Okay, Charlie Kuno, uh, Robbo's list, number one player in the competition, yay or nay? Overstated, understated, right on the money? Well, I haven't really looked at it. Um, number one player in the comp, overstated. But that's just the, the, the opinion. Where have you got him? Um, I've got him in probably the top 10. I haven't sat down and do, done a top 50, but I would have him probably as one of the 10 players. I'd have Jeremy Cameron. I think Jeremy Cameron is a more important, interesting, better player and more more rounded than uh, Charlie Kerno. But right. uh, Charlie Kerno is definitely one of the better players in the competition. Um, Pencil Matt, Harry Harry Sheasel in for um, uh, halfback Nick Dacos like influence from um, halfback this season. He went and played the last quarter there apparently and burnt and just lit the joint up. This is a very talented goal kicker. Yeah, he's a talented young kid. I reckon. Uh, pencil him in for halfback, overstated, well, understated. Well, I think you could. It'll depend on where they need him. At some point, they may feel like he's been frozen out of the game. It's really tough. For him to get into the game, and they want to place him somewhere else where he's going to be best suited to yep. be able to display his skill. So it may mean that they're going to free him up and do something like that. He's ta he's a talented player, and you and I both are agree that those young players who are naturals like he is can play pretty much anywhere they like. Yeah. They'll find the ball and they'll be effective. Um, I like the fact that they threw him back there and just had a look at him. Oh, that's what practice games are all about, though, aren't they? At some point in the game, you say, okay, well, you know, let's just see what this kid can do in this position. Here's one for you that I heard, or it was, I don't know if I heard it publicly. Jack Revolt and Trent Cotchin are too old and shouldn't have gone around again. Uh, it's too early to say. Overstated, then? Yeah, no, I that's think it's a, a, overstated. It. It's too early to say right. whether or not that's the case. You, there were signs for that. Are they a watch? There's been, yeah, no, there's been a bit. Yeah, everyone's a watch when you get Ooh. to a certain. No, but everyone's a watch when you get to a certain stage right in this game, aren't they? Yeah. Like if I said to you, of these two players, who had a better season last year, do you think? Joel Selwood or Trent Cotchin? And so, I only say that because one chose to leave the game and the other's so chosen what? to stay in the game. Selwood so had a better year. Didn't yeah, he? he probably did. So he, he's left the game and yeah. the other guy's still playing because he felt like he still had something left in the tank, and Richmond did too. Right but it remains to be seen how much or how effective and how influential he's going to be as a player. But as a leader, which is harder to quantify, mm. having him there in the dressing room day in, day out, what effect does that have on the, the rest point, of the group? Yeah, how important point. might that be? Kuno Mackay, last two common winners from outside the eight. <laughs> Thank you uh, for pointing that out. Uh, Finn Callahan, I heard uh, Matty Rendell talking about him. He played a handful of games last year. Okay, Highly credentialed young oh, kid. Very highly. Everyone likes yep. this kid. Yep. Will win the rising star. Overstated or understated? Well, I, I don't think you can say it's overstated because he may just – explode. He may explode. Yeah, you, he, he looked good. But last week we were talking about Ashcroft, weren't we? Yeah. And let me just add to that and say Cam McKenzie makes the odds for the Rising Star look stupid. Mm. And can the, I add another one? The Hawthorne boy. The Hawthorne kitty. Mm. I've got another one that I liked at the weekend. I don't know that he's going to get enough of the ball to actually be the Rising Star, but uh, Alwyn Davy Jr. can play. Put a CP. Don't, along, no, put, a, no. put a CP alongside his name. See, you've 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 tempered that down a bit. You've watered that down to what you were saying before six o'clock this morning. A little bit. You said he'll be far and away the best Davy to play. That's what you said. Uh well, he's got a Aaron. I, I think he will. I actually think he will. I think okay. he's. I think he's a nice. He's a, he's actually a cross between his old man and Aaron in style of play, but. Uh, 
He is super talented, like super talented for a young player. So I think he's going to have a very nice career at Essen. Lean, clean, Tom Green. Yeah. Brownlow medal contender this season. What say you? No overstatement. That's not an overstatement. No. Wow. I love him. I love lean, clean, Tom Green. And he's leaner. He's leaner. And he's cleaner. always been clean. No, he's always been clean. He was clean, Tom Green, last year. Now yeah. he's lean, clean, Tom No, Green. he's lean, clean, Tom Green, which is hard to say. But, um, and this, the, the, these are the reasons why yep. they didn't get any heartburn when they lost three midfielders last year. Well, yeah. Because they still knew what they had in the cupboard. I mean, you know, we've already spoken about Finn Callahan, who will probably play in the midfield somewhere. Yeah. And uh, lean, clean, Tom Green yeah. as well. You're going to run with that, are you? I'm going to just call him LC. All right, LC Green. Well, I said to you, we need to do a ring around of our interstate friends or our non-Victorian clubs mm. to get a better appreciation for what's happening. And you said, don't worry, just leave it to me. I'm across everything. Mm-hmm. So what's going on with the uh, Eagles? Um, well, where was that game played between them and Adelaide at the weekend? Over there. In Perth? Yep. Yeah, no, that's a worry. <laughs> That's a worry when you're performing like that at home They're going to finish, in a practice game. Right, I'll let me put it into a statement so you can overstate it. Or okay, understand. I just want to have a quick look at my um, Nuffy book here. Because, are they bottom four uh, Eagles yeah, this bo- year? Yeah, no, they, they are. I got them bottom four, but just looking at that, they got absolutely pantsed in games last year too. So, how many did they win last year? They won, only won. Did they only win two games last year. Two games. That's it for the year. They played top eight sides twelve times, and they. Had some horrendous losses last year, like heavy, non-competitive, heavy, heavy losses. One of those last teams they beat was Collingwood. At, uh, I watched at Marvel mm, Stadium. That was a Marvel Stadium early yeah. in the year. Yeah, um, you were very good that day in the commentary box. That's what I remember. Ten most losses, about the game. ten losses by fifty points or more. Mm. Are you worried about them? Bottom uh, four. Uh, I, well, when you're so worried, I'm not worried. I'm not thinking that they're going to challenge for a top eight position, mm. but in terms of historically. Their ability as a football club to get it right yep. and to build, again, has been demonstrated over time. So I'm not worried about their long term, but in the short term, they're not going to be one of the better sides in the competition. Uh, Liam Jones, uh, back playing AFL football, a key defender for the Bulldogs, yep. which they needed. Yep. Um, a According to our man Brooksy, who went there to watch him at the weekend and yeah. took a notepad full of notes, yeah. and, all and got a, red, white, and blue uh, paint in his hair. All Australian contender this year. Overstated week. whispers. Overstated that one. He played a magnificent game, Liam Jones, mm-hmm. um, as a result of the way North Melbourne kicked the football, particularly in the first quarter that I watched. Anyway. Right, they kicked the ball away. He was he was great, and mm. he, that's what he did. He looked like he hadn't missed a beat, and it's so exciting for the Dogs fans. Those four tools, they, not not Grundy and Gorn, the four Western Bulldog tools are going to be the biggest headache in football. Yes, um, and we wondered how they might be able to combine the four of them, but apparently what well, they're doing. Well, Bevo at 7.40. Well, yes, but they're doing like a, a three on the field at one time and then they're interchanging one. But the marking pressure is going to be unbelievable. Like o- o- opposition defending that tall timber. And you know what I reckon it's going to do in a funny sort of a way? Mm-hmm. I reckon it's going to fast track Eugle Hagen's development because – the focus ain't going to be on the kid. Like, it's going to be probably on the others more than it's going to be on him. So he's just going to get a nice little ride and he's just going to be able to develop and mature the way that we've seen him begin to develop and mature. Essendon kicked three goals for the weekend. Yep. Uh, Mark Robinson says, I'm not jumping the gun. It was a practice match, but there would not be an Essendon supporter that's happy. People say there's a... The only team in the AFL who tell their fans we're not ready yet. It's going to take uh, take time. Is that an overstatement or an understatement? No, that is uh, a reality check. I think other clubs have said that too, haven't they? Like Hawthorne are saying, uh, "Be patient." You know, like they're on a build, they're on a reset, all that sort of stuff. Um, there hasn't been a lot to get too excited about watching Essendon play yet. Like, there's no there's no discernible difference in the way that they are playing and practice I, match. it's a, exactly it's, it's a practice match. And sometimes these things take a while to kick in and you've got to give them time, that type of thing. I want to see from Essendon something that underpins the way they play. They're a solid foundation about defensive mechanisms. Recognizable. And, then, and something that's recognizable as 
a way of playing. Right. Now, if you look at, say, you know, like you and I are talking about Hawthorne there during the break, you say, I can see what they're doing. I, I, you can see what Sam Mitchell is doing and how he wants his team to play, how athletic and bouncy and speed off the back line, all that type of thing. You can see all that. Having said that, like they've caught the two teams they've played so far, both, well, both good teams. Mm. They played Geelong and then they played Collingwood. I mean, both those teams have kicked a lot of, a lot of goals against them. So, you know, like they're not stopping the scoring, but no. at the same time, they're looking like they want to be in a really attacking unit and score themselves, which is a good thing. But at some point, they're going to have to get a, a better balance. That's a great observation. <clears throat> and that's exactly what they hope to do this year, is that they know they can go and they know they can attack, but is they've got to be able to defend better on the weekend. And at, gee, at stages early in the piece, look like they're going to get pushed off the park. Mm. That they uh, hung in. And mm. my takeaway from the whole footy or, or the stuff that I watched on the weekend is is – the, the kickers are back in footy. If, mm. you, if you if you if you if you can't kick in this game, mm. you're going to struggle. And mm. I know that sounds a silly because it's football and all that sort of stuff. But their their ability, their young blokes can all kick. Composure, McKenzie, mm. um, McDonald. All, all, they've got really good composure when they've got the ball in hand. And I go back to my side, who my big beef with them over the journey is they give the footy back a bit, mm. and particularly when they go forward. But all of a sudden they got. Yeah, Bowie's back is a good kicker. Spargo's a good kicker. They recruit Lockie Hunter's a good kicker. Petrarca, you know, so that was the takeaway for me that they, you know, don't give the footy back as much. So the good sides are the good kicking sides, Wisp. They don't hand the footy back. You also wanted to talk about Jath this morning, didn't you? I did. I did in terms of just watchable. You know I mean, the... when you're sitting back and you're watching the footy and sometimes at this time of year you've got half an eye on it, you mm. might be doing something else. When he's around... When he's around the ball, you just you watch. Mm. He, God, he's a powerful. He's a powerful, powerful athlete. And he takes the game on. He bounds, he, doesn't he? Oh, unbelievably so. And he, he got injured the back half last year. So, who's your most watchable out there? Like your yep. obvious one, like Cripps and Petrarca and all that sort of stuff. But have you got a little smoky watchable? Um, well, give, I, give us oh four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen. Who's your smoky watchable for the year? Nick Dacos got tagged. Yeah. The, we haven't seen that very often. He oh, was in the midfield. He got uh, taken by McGuinness, and um, he made it a really uncomfortable afternoon for him. Yep. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with him, you know, like because they want him to be a functional, effective player for them. He will get a lot more of that this year than what he has previously, I think, even though, you know, we talked about it last year, like how much damage he was doing off the halfback flank for Begs Collingwood. Begs a question, isn't it? Why didn't they do it last year? There wasn't a lot of that activity no, last year, but he got pushed in, He got pushed into the midfield. I don't know. Had he played on halfback, maybe McGuinness still would have gone to him. Maybe that was the plan. Wherever he went, he was going to he get did. that tag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you reckon he's going to cope in his second year? Um, well, I'd be pretty confident that he'll be able to cope well because everything else he's done in mm. his footy career has been outstanding. And his old man was interviewed on your station, I think. He said, oh, I didn't even look at it as a compliment. Mm. And now get to work on how you're going to work through it. Be because sure as hell, if if he can't work or if he doesn't work through it so well, then that's his lot for the year. Because mm. other clubs will go, right, eh? don't like it, so let's go. But if he if he shakes it hard early, gets a couple of 30-plus 30 tu 30 touches games, then clubs will pretty quickly go, oh. Philosophically, though, there's not every club in the competition, on what we saw last year, is going to do that, are they? Like, not every club is going to have somebody like Hardly anyone. a hard tagger that just goes after somebody and puts a clamp on them completely. But would you, if, would you now, if, so Collingwood played Geelong mm. round one, they don't tag. No, but you've got to have, um, what's the term? You've got to have a cooler. You need that bloke. They don't have a cooler. Well, they, who? Geelong? Yeah. Um, well, they That's don't have nice. a hard. They nice play. Yeah, they don't have the frosty cooler. They have more of the. <laughs> The Zuper Duper. They have the. <laughs> they got a Zuper Duper. They, they have sort of like the crush, the crushed ice, as opposed to the hard. Who's their ice. crush? Who's their Zuper Duper? <laughs> I haven't. Maybe Guthrie. No. Because I watch. You know, I was watching um, uh, Essendon play against St Kilda to to this point, and yeah. that is that you know, like Essendon got off to a fast start, and you know, a lot of their mids were getting a lot of the ball, and they looked like they were really active, and then the game started to sort of change. And you think, okay, what's different? You go back and you sort of freeze the frame and. Yeah, you know, Rossi's got his midfielders now and they're being a lot more accountable than what they actually started the game playing at. And 
And then that changes, you know, like these guys that sort of like to have a little bit of width when they play, mm. see themselves as creative players, not necessarily accountable, stoppable players, but like he got in. And that's what, you know, like if you're a St Kilda fan, you know what, once, once the season gets started and they find their feet and they understand that, you know what you're going to get from a Ross Lyon team and that's accountability Great defensive pressure, great competitiveness from your team, week in, week out. Mm. And well, they, they, you know, like anyone that sort of went off half cocked after that first game against Melbourne, they're going to be all right, St Kilda. They're not going to be the best team in the competition, but they're going to be. What's all right for gonna, St Kilda? Mean well, they're going to they're going to be challenging for a top eight spot. You think they'll challenge yeah. for top eight? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I think they will challenge oh, for top Buckles eight. Oh, Bucklesby had them in the top bottom four. Did he? I think uh, he might have gone a little bit early on that. I right. think they'll. I think they will challenge for. Oh, did you see Owens play at the weekend too? The young kid. I only I watched the first quarter. Yeah, no, he's got some talent. He's got a bit of X factor about All him. Right, get him. The temper Texas humming. Uh, Billy Elliot. Yeah, that's a great nomination as someone who is watchable when he's going. Can't take your eyes off. Oh, him. one of my favourite players. 